We're live. Hello, evening. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and others who've just tuned into this discussion uh, between myself, Temba Kubeka, Khofu Kwape. Um, you know what? This is going to be a heavy hitter because these two gentlemen are ready to, to take these myths about farm ownership in South Africa and bat them out the park. And then we can probably answer some of your questions as well. And maybe we can even make this a regular feature. I think Temba likes it. We might still have to tie Hoffa to his chair and bring him <laughs> here on like an odd weekly basis. Guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here. Yeah, thanks sure. thanks for having us, it's a, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here, man. Awesome, awesome. So um, I'm sort of going to start with Timber to set the tone. There was a Daily Maverick hit piece about a Sunday or two ago where they, yeah, yeah, where they tried doing this whole shtick where, um, you know, gun owners are like it's racially divided and we're a bunch of misogynist white men who... Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out what to what to say. Like, like you you got the drift, and it pissed me off, but I know it 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 annoyed you a heck of a lot as well. Yeah, it it it, it went up the wrong hole. Um, it, I mean, we, we we've got Kofu with us today. Um, we we spoke. I think on, on the last bro broadcast we spoke about uh, me having being legally armed at least for the past five years. Yeah. He's been doing sport for I don't know how long. His entire family um, has been armed for the longest time. I mean, yeah. almost almost as old as he is, if not more. So for me, that, that was really, a, a, don't excuse my Africans, but a cuck statement. Yeah. No, that, that's exactly it. And that's why we, we brought Hofu with us, because believe it or not, between all three of us here, Hofu's been armed the longest. He's been doing sports shooting the longest. Um, I think you've been a dedicated sport person and you've been in this in this uh, community the longest. So you are by far the most senior gun owner out of all of us. And, you know, that's something that a lot of people accuse me online of lying about. They're like, no, but black people don't own guns. Black people don't do sports shooting. And I'm like, that's a bit, it's a bit, that's a bit racist. That's a bit like saying, but black people don't drink whiskey and black people don't enjoy good coffee. It's, it's yeah. utter nonsense. So, Hofu, give us a bit of background. Like, how did you start? What would you, you know, what did you enjoy? What didn't you enjoy? And how would you recommend people get into this thing? Yeah. I've, I, I think I bought, uh, yeah, I, mean, I grew up in a family of, of obviously, you know, that, that loved guns. Uh, my, my dad, funny, was a bit, was a cop back in the day. Um, and he, he owned like a, a 22 Rowley. Um, and then after that, you know, he bought himself a, a Taurus. I think it was a 917, if I'm not mistaken. And that was actually like, I think, the first proper gun that I actually shot. And this was back in the 90s. Um, I remember that's when they still had to go to to do the shooting range at night. I don't know why they had to do it at night in the middle of the night. Maybe they felt it was a bit safer then and do the proficiency and all of that. And and I just pretty much grew up in that environment. My dad got his piece. My brothers got their guns, you know. And a couple of years later, my dad came to visit me. Um, and as we were sitting, he said, "So, have you bought yourself a gun?" And and my mind was kind of not really there at that point in time, you know, teenager, enjoying myself, first job, you know, first place. And and he looked at me as if I had committed the biggest crime in the world, you know. <laughs> and he's like, you, you have to get a gun. I mean, you're naked right now, you know. And <clears throat> a few months later, I mean, I went into the shop. I knew the gun that I wanted. Um, um, I, I wanted a, a, a Glock. Um, and then I got to the store uh, in, in Centurion, and then the guy shows me this Heckland Koch, and I think, wow, I, now I want that, you know, but it was a little bit too much out of my budget, you know, so I ended up settling for a Glock. I think this was in 20, 2011 or 2012, around that time, <clears throat> and I bought my first Glock license, did, did my competency, and, you know, had to obviously brace the weight, the itch. And then I, and then, you know, I just, I somehow bumped one night I was sitting in my office and I came across Gunsight, 
you know, and I realized, wow, I'm not, I'm not that insane. You know, there's actually guys like me out there, but better, you know, in a way. And I joined Gunsight and I got to sort of learn about competition shooting, you know, um, training and all of that picked up all this. It was just a whole world of information that I'd never been exposed to. Um, and remember at that time, there wasn't a lot of content on YouTube about guns. You know, it was just, you know, things I think we had the back up. then. Yeah, back then, um, YouTube videos were still limited, I think, like 10 minutes uh, a piece. Like, yeah, that was yeah, the yeah. longest YouTube video you could lo upload. Uh, things have changed, guys. Like, yeah. <laughs> 10 years ago, I mean, it wasn't it was, a joke. It was what, Hip Hop and, and, and uh, um, I, can't, I can't remember the other guy, um, Hip Hop 45 uh, and something not, not nice, something nice or something like that, you know? And that that's what I lapped up. You know, and I just met all these guys in the industry from from Gunsight and obviously learning all these things. And I just got into sport shooting, um, started with my block, um, you know, and, and that's how I pretty much picked up my points and learned that you could actually own AKs and ARs, you know, because we, we didn't think it was possible at that time. And would remarkably, realize remarkably similar journey to mine. Uh, the only difference is I, I went for the HK and I still have the HK, <laughs> but um, but it's exactly the same. Started shooting sports with my carry gun because yeah, yeah. that was the thing. And just to say hello to every single person who who's in the comments with us, Floyd. Good evening, great to see you back, Wilson. Uh, good evening, uh, my. Uh, Rest of my, I can't speak Sasutu anymore. I've lost it because Dumela is goodbye. I don't, is it, is it hello as well? Yeah, it is. I think. It, it, no, it's hello. It's actually, it's not goodbye. It's, it's actually just it's hello. hello. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Wilson, please don't stress about it, mate. Like people call me worse things. Um, Mr. Panish, <laughs> good to see you. Floyd, you're more than welcome. We'd actually love to have you on. Um, in fact, mm -hmm. if you'd like to well, be on, just well, drop me a mail. Floyd looks awfully younger to be on TV. You know? <laughs> He does a bit. Uh, <laughs> drop me an email and uh, we can always make, make a plan. Um, Cebu Sisu is here. Um, nothing fancy. There we go. Yeah, nothing fancy. Yeah. Um, uh, Raymond Les, uh, Sanele. Uh, yeah. Do, do you it's see my... what's happened? Hey? Do you see what's happened? The, 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 the comments are actually uh, dispelling the myth. The comments, yeah, you know, the, yeah. the comments are big. Yeah, and this is, yeah. And, and, and this is why I feel like the, these types of conversations that we're having now are very overdue because um, I suppose everything happens at the right time. But, I mean, it's just the three yeah. of us talking about ordinary firearm ownership in SA. And that's <laughs> yeah. well, I'll, let, me, let me interject. Sorry, let yeah. me interject before I forget. I don't want to mess up my train of thought. Because something really offended me, like seriously, as as a um, as a black person in this country, I was seriously offended by something online, and I I, I do need to address this. Country essay say, say um, the the idea that a firearm will protect you. Uh, or gives you a better chance. I can't remember what, what the actual tweet was, but uh, it was uh, all attached to it. And it was obliterated because, uh, I mean, there's only three uh, of them. Uh, that it's not, yeah, a, that it's not, not a right. Not that, tweet. Um, that was yeah, the one thing. It's not, not a right. Yes, yeah. yes, that is not a right. Now, kind of like digging your own grave, wasn't it? Like, do you dig your own grave and then you think you're going to bury other people and you end up being buried in that grave? You know, basically, yeah. but here's what offended me. I, I and, and I don't know if you saw it this way as well. Hoff. They then said, you know, uh, regardless what the results of their own poll say, they feel very well. The results are in, it's a myth. I mean, people who, who, who said it's a myth were less than five percent, it was probably like what three percent, it was three percent, actually, three percent, and 97 went on fact. And then yeah. the the rest of their statement says it, it is it is it is not a, a right; it's a privilege. It's not in the constitution. Now, yeah. um, there's the two reasons why this offends me. Right? 
my, my family is mixed race, so to speak. There was a time in this country where that was a crime. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was a time in this country where I could not buy a firearm. Kofu would not have been a, a sports shooter. Yeah. Because that's what the constitution said. Now, yeah. uh, I, a lot of people, and I've been trying to, to, to sway a lot of people from this whole communism talk. But to me, that is communism. If you're saying, if it's not on paper, then you cannot have it. Yeah, yeah. That, that is absolute nonsense. I mean, it, it, that it is, is absolute implied. nonsense. It, it, it's an implied right. I've, I've got the right to life. I've got a, a right to safety, and the government is failing dismally. They're beautifully failing at providing me with the safety. So much so that they increased the budget to provide themselves with the safety because they can see that yeah, on a yeah. lot of scale they're failing. Now, you want to say tomorrow, if someone puts out a law, that says um, people, people, uh, mixed race people should should be done away with, like Hitler did. Yeah. You, you you're saying that is good because it's on a piece of paper. That really offended me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and yeah. and and we're we're of the exact same mind here because my response to that is when people said, "Oh, but it's it's it really isn't a right; it's a privilege," and I made the typical example that one of the, the largest uh, civil disobedience uprisings probably in our national history were the, the past book protest or the past law protest in the 60s. Yeah, and yeah. you were, as a black South African, denied the right of, of freedom of movement. Now, yeah. freedom of movement is so basic and so harmless. And at this exact same arguments against gun owners are like, yeah, you don't need a gun. You can go, sure, but you also don't need to be allowed to walk down the street. It, it, there's no such thing as need. Need is a made-up bullshit angle to, to try and substantiate a non-argument to remove rights from people just because it's not written in a book. Back then in the 1960s, it wasn't written in the Constitution that you as a black South African had the right to freedom of movement. The fact that, that that right was removed from you unlawfully by an oppressive, tyrannical government yeah. is indicative that the government is fucking wrong. So I need to swear yeah. this on my on my own post because it is uh, serious. But the government is in the wrong. People who swear, you know? exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. You know? But, um, but, but just, just to jump in there, Hidian, sorry to, to interrupt. Um, I find that this argument of saying, um, you know, Owning a, a firearm is 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 not a is not a right. It's a privilege. It, it's it's actually quite. Um, I don't know what what if I should use the term uh, fallacy. You know, for fallacy. If yeah. I mean, but, yeah, it's disingenuous. Yeah, because I mean, the constitution basically tells you that you've got the right to life. Yeah. You know what I mean. Um, and 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 what is the primary purpose of owning a firearm? you know, is to ensure that you can actually protect, you know, yourself so that you can enjoy the, you know, the very same right that's in the constitution, you know. So if you're saying that it, it's a privilege, so are you saying it's a privilege and not a right for me to protect myself uh, and, 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 the, and, 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 and the life, my life and the life of, of my family or my fellow men, you know what I mean? So it's actually some sort of bullshit that people are just sort of concocting to try and prove, you know, a non-existent, uh, you know, sort of ideology that, you know, we can we can exist in a country like South Africa, you know, without having to own firearms. You know what I mean? And and that's why you find, you know, tweets like Gun Free SA after they do a, a survey you know, even though they've had their asses dragged on the floor and they had their asses handed over to them, they just tweet and say it's a fact. You know what I mean? Even though yeah. the numbers speak for themselves. You know, I mean, 97% of the of the poll tells you that, no, it's a fact. And then the other 3% say it's a myth. And you just go on and disregard everyone and say, no, it's, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a myth. What does that you know mean from I mean? Mythbusters? I reject your reality and substitute my own. That's exactly what these stupid idiots went and done. Because um, I like you know what I mean? Mean, uh, uh, comment. Uh, which you one? See? David Lipman, the, the one on the screen now. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, that's so the one. By yeah, the time we come to my late father, who was a pharmacist in District <clears> 6, <throat> we know all about how this District 6, because of a piece of paper, was done away with. Um, had to get a special permit to employ training pharmacists who are of color. What nonsense is that? Yeah, it's, it's kind of and like having to motivate why you need a firearm, isn't it? Yeah, and, and that is, right? and that's exactly I have, I, the, it. Go if you're saying, go. you see, there are many rights in the constitution that tie the dovetail into me wanting or me, let me use the word one because as we said, need is just a, a stupid term. There's many rights that uh, dovetail into why I want that. You said I've got the right to freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of choice. Sometimes, and as it is in this country, we saw we lost one of our own uh, a week or two ago. Um, sometimes the speech that you need to make to people attacking you is a, a, is a legal speech. So if you're yeah. if you're muting my right to that legal speech, then how 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 do you then say I'm free? Yeah, I agree. Totally agree. Totally and that's the, and that's also the thing is is they keep coming back to the fact that that they think wrongly that our rights come from a piece of paper or from a book. The Constitution isn't a magic book. It's not from a fairy tale that a wizard writes in it with magic ink and then you get rights that come from the book. The Constitution is there to protect our rights as best as it can from infringement. It does a pretty poor job of that, but it's still yeah. better than not having it. But to use it as an exhaustive list, like that you can tick the boxes, is, uh, I mean, there's a wonderful word that came out of this pandemic response. It's called midwits. And it's basically middle or upper middle class people who had went to good schools, but that are fucking stupid. And, you know, so you're, you're not a nitwit, you're a midwit. Um, you're just, just intelligent <laughs> enough to have a bad argument on the internet. And there, there's so much of that in this whole thing oh but your right isn't written on a piece of paper therefore it doesn't exist or you should obey because it's the law and it's like my goodness gracious guys like rewind just a couple of decades and go look at how many bad laws there were not just in this country but in many other countries yeah. around the world that led to some awful things happening like it is the law is not a good argument it's not moral ethical or rational but anyway yeah. that's a whole nother discussion i mean none of us are well this is not legal legal talk with Gideon Temban Hofu. I mean, it's hopefully more exciting than that. <laughs> yeah. Let's do some pew-pew, you know? Yeah, let's do some pew-pew. So, uh, Temba, that was an epic dunk on the um, on that Twitter poll. I see they're running another one, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the third one they're running now, right, isn't it? Are you guys there? Uh, yes. Yeah, I think we, we lost are. you there for a sec. Yeah. Are you back, Temba? Have we lost Timber? Yeah, we're here. Oh God, oh God, I'm gonna to have to phone Timber. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, 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 you, um, you, I, I'm going to just make Timber chill for a sec, and then I'm going okay. to ask you to carry on while I sort him out. Um, Timber, if you can hear us, give us a hand signal. Um, oh. Okay, all right. He's, oh, back. There, He's back. He's back. He's back. There's the hand signal, I think. I yeah. think there was a hand signal. Not, Timber. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. I think uh your connection is, is is giving us issues. Because my, oh, uh, okay. my my Wi-Fi is all the way up. Okay, well well i I'll I'll take the blame for that. Okay. Technical problems <laughs> aside. Um I was about to ask Hofu to actually I don't know, Hofu, like, do you have any AOs or AKs? Are are you free to tell us this? uh what in terms of by what what i own yeah your, your sports shooting stuff like and do you enjoy them or rather what do you enjoy and what do you enjoy about them i well i i i i've got quite a number of pistols um i'm a big 1911 fan um believe it or not um, seven rounds in god's own caliber right <laughs> I, I i actually carried one for about i think three years or so um and and you know i i enjoy it i mean shooting that thing is just a breeze the trigger on that thing i mean once you shoot a 1911 and, and you just feel the trigger and that you know that 45 go bang you know it's it's, it's very difficult to be normal again you know um 
But I was about to say, respect for carrying an actual 1911 platform because that's proper. I mean, that's a big piece of steel. Yeah, but but I think it's 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 not as heavy as people think. Really, it is. I mean, I I, I carried a 1911 with I think like something like four extra magazines. You know, I'd have like two in the car, like two on me, and you know, like one in the gun, in, in the gun. And 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 I mean, I did it. Luckily, I never had an encounter, and and you know, which I guess maybe the you know the the ancestors were on my side. You know what I mean? And. But I don't carry it as much as I did before. No, I, <laughs> well, you know, I, I hop in between you know, the other pistols that I have. You know what I mean? Um, but it's a beautiful piece of, 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 of steel. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. You know, and I'm, it won two world Well, And if I'm not I'm, mistaken... I'm, I yeah, think I'm joining you. I'm about to join you. Okay, so I don't have a proper 1911. I'm waiting for a license for a Norinco Dark 40. So what it is, it is it's the Norinco NP48, which is the 1911 chambered in, in 40 yeah. Smith & Wesson, but it's a double stack magazine. So it takes about, I think, 15 rounds. Mm. Um, mm. And then a Canadian gunsmithing bunch called Dark Industries, I think, or something, went and they yeah, yeah. did a serious amount of gunsmithing on the thing and then i don't know if they shipped it back to norinco or if it shipped from canada i'm not sure but it doesn't say norinco anywhere on the gun mm -hmm. it just says made in china but dark 40 yeah. on the side um i can't wait to shoot this thing and if it's reliable and if it works it might become like a bri fire carry just you know for, for the hell of it just um because yeah. it's a bit of a conversation piece it's a it's an interesting gun it's not in the 45 i am sad that it's not in 45 um but i mean for uh, i'll take 40 short and wimpy uh you know it's it's still something different to the nine mils that i own which i mean i've got yeah, enough yeah. I, but i mean T Temba, do you do you at least have do you have anything interesting like a tokarev or a makarov or anything like that do you, do you just stick to the normal like I don't talk about them. Hey. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I'm, I'm a clock guy. Um, I've got I've got a 19 and 19 X uh, waiting for um, a 17 MOS waiting for a 48 and a 43 X. Um, and in terms of business, I've got DPM. I've got. Yeah. Um, uh, the, 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 I've got my Factory 66 under folder, courtesy of uh, the good people at Tactical HQ. Um, I've got uh, it's the DPMs and, and, and yeah, there's other AKs that, uh, I, yeah, so in terms of the entire collection from personal to, to business, I'm sitting on about close to 70 pieces now. That's decent. Okay, so you've got yeah, proper skin like, in the game. Like, like I want to come live with him. I want to be his wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, you'll bring the good whiskey, cigars, and jazz, and Temple will bring the, bring the guns. It'll be a good like relationship built on trust, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. I mean, like, you can't go wrong with that. At well, all. I'm, well, I'm not going to say what I own because I know my wife is watching, so I don't want to get into trouble. You know, <laughs> well, don't and, and just make sure in your will is written what the actual value is so that she doesn't yeah, solve yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't want to make a mistake <laughs> there. You know? bring up a nice topic there. Um, what, what does she what does she carry? If she carry, sorry, I'm saying what does she carry because remember, yeah. this whole thing it's we 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 we're talking about the fact that this is not a white issue, this is not a male issue. This is a, 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 a people's issue. This is a freedom issue. Yeah. This, is, this is a choice issue. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so my wife currently doesn't carry anything, uh, but we've had this discussion, and I mean, it's taken a bit of time to get her to come around to sort of, you know, wanting to actually own a firearm. Um, so we, we are now going to start the process of getting her to do a competency, Excellent. you know, and, and getting her, you know, a, a, you know, something that she can carry. Um, and it, it's taken all these years, but I'm happy that we're here. You know what I mean? Because it, it, it has always been, nah, I don't want, I don't want, you know what I mean? And it, it always kind of sort of freaked me out the fact that, 
you know, she would sort of drive to work and she wouldn't have anything to protect herself with. And then finally, now we're here and she's agreed that she will actually get one. Um, and I mean, imagine this is what, after almost 10 years or so, you know, um, if my, my, my math calculation is right. So yeah, it took a while, but we're here, you know. So mm. I'm generalizing so now, I'm but generalizing I was now, but told I was by a relatively by a wise relatively man. And I'm getting feedback. Hang on. I was going to see if that was Tembo, if that's you. That's uh, Hofu. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There we go. So I'll put you back, Hofu, in a sec. So um, it took me about it took about 10 years. Uh, not, not 10 years. It took my missus a very long time as well to get there. But once she was convinced that she wanted to own a firearm, um, that was it. Like it was straight path. Like no wasting time, no second guessing, and uh, yeah. So, so women seem to take longer to get comfortable, but once they're convinced, you ain't gonna get them off that road again. And uh, just to 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 quickly carry on with with Timber, Timber organized an amazing thing earlier this year, I think. It was end of last year, early yeah. this year. No, it was this year still, um, where you got a lot of women from from your community and neighboring areas to expose themselves to firearms for the first time. And it was a huge success that you actually had to recruit help because you couldn't do it your, on your own. Yeah, and and uh, um, Lynette at uh, Girls on Fire jumped on board and it just, like with every... With every date that we gave out, for instance, we, we, we had a sponsor, uh, Waterfall Arms, and they gave us a number. For instance, they said 20. <laughs> we could not get 20. It was always 40. So we had to shave it down to 30. Each and every time we had it. I think we had it running for like a good, uh, was it six months, I think. can't remember how long it ran. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 was a, it was a great thing. And I'm still getting people saying, hey, hey. You know, um, even guys are saying now, guys that I never thought would uh, look that way. Um, in, in the past week alone, um, I've had to help, uh, I've had to help like five guys uh, buy firearm. They're applying for the So this, this, is, this is now what I do all the time. I'm the guy that helps you get a gun. Yeah. And you're the guy that's uh, um, one, two, three, three. You're about 11 guns over Tele's limit. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which which no, is, is a couple of guns more than I am over his limit, but I'm trying to catch up to you, mate. Don't worry. Um, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm actually, I'm, these are rookie numbers by my standards because I'm, I'm still looking to, to, to go all out. I mean, if, if, if he wants to come and get them, he's, He's gonna need a couple of trucks and body bags. Yeah. That's well, what I also keep how to shoot, You know. Yeah. First, they gotta learn how to shoot because you know they yeah. won't take my guns just like that. You know. <laughs> uh, but um, but I'm glad, Hofi. I'm glad your missus is on the path. Like, congratulations. That must have taken a fair amount of of persist. Well, I suppose not persistence, but. You know, you can you can never force the issue. Otherwise, big trouble. But um, no, definitely, you don't want to do that. You know, and and you know we, you know, here's the thing with 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 us firearm owners, we always picture this whole Mister and Missus Smith situation. You know, that you know you, you know your wife's gonna have you know all these guns and she's gonna love everything that you love. You know what I mean? But in actual reality, you know, I mean it, it, it's the total opposite. You know, you, you almost sort of become like that annoying little pest in the house who always wants to talk about guns, you know, and while you should be changing diapers, you know, you want to tell her about the latest Glock 19, you know, and the latest ammo, you know what I mean? So, you know, you, you kind of sort of get brought down to earth, back back to earth to say, hold on, hold on, nigga. You know, you know we will be Mr. and Mrs. Smith, you know what I'm saying? That type of thing. Never but like also I said, we're here. <laughs> but never teach your missus to shoot. Get someone else it's to roll the dirt. Your yeah, 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 big time. Craig, good evening. Like uh, Craig, uh, Craig's got the Rona, by the way. Hey, I'm saying that's the myth that goes around in the black community. Um, I, I hear a lot of guys say, "Oh, you teach her how to shoot, she's gonna kill you." I'm like, "But dude, you eat her food every night, every night." Yeah. 
if she's going oh, to yeah. leave, she's, she's not going to oh. go out with all the blood and, and stuff. It's going to be nice and silent. You're going to die in your sleep. Oh, no, that's not the reason I'm saying you shouldn't teach how to shoot. You shouldn't teach your missus how to shoot because um, I, I, I don't know how the, 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 couples don't tend to do these, teach each other how to do things very well as a rule. Like some really do. But Have you tried to teach a girlfriend how to drive? No, but I can imagine exactly the same problem. Like rather not just <laughs> just fork out the money for the professionals to do it. <laughs> I, I once, I once, the, the weird, the craziest thing once happened before. You know, I, my my wife didn't know how to ride a bike, so I had to teach her from scratch. And you know, naturally, I just gave her my bike. You know, I was like, no, you you hop on this. You know, we'll see what happens because I didn't want to go and buy a bike because I was a cheap ass skate. You know, and that kind of didn't work out. I think after a month of trying, I actually ultimately decided to go buy her her own bike. And you know, we decided to start going. You know, and and you know how they get all sloppy with you. You know, what I mean, because it's you, you're you're the you're the you're the man. You know, and we were riding down the the road the one time. It was sort of. Uh, deep line sort of like a descent you know and and i kept on saying to her hit your brakes hit your brakes and she just took her legs off and then she fell that just so happened that there was a group of ladies on the side and as she fell she stood up she looked at me and she wanted to cry and i was like don't cry i told you what to do and you didn't do it you know and literally after i said that all these ladies were just around me and everyone was just on top of me <laughs> I was like, I think, you know, that that was like the worst thing I sort of like did, you know what I mean? And you learn from that, that some of these things you must just stay away from. Get someone to teach her, you know? Yeah. The best. Yeah. 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 No, no, I, like 100%, 100% with you there. Um, I, I did not, in fact, by the way, on this comment, I did not, in fact, see the consternation the title caused. I hope it did. I hope it is, it is causing all the... The, the midwits to lose their, their shit completely um, because they don't like the Smith being busted. Um, they want to see, I don't know, what they what they think the gun community is. So good. I'm, I'm glad we're doing, we're getting the reach. I haven't seen the video either. That's big English for me. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> what is our title actually? To be honest, I forgot. It's Tembo Quebec and Hofo Kwape talk about black gun owners yeah, and sports shooting or something. And, yeah, pretty much uh, yeah. everything. Uh, here's another angle. I shoot with my <laughs> son, Junior, Junior is 16. Uh, and whenever we can get uh, time, of course, I, you know, we, we our time is clutch. I've, I've, I've got a very, very tight shit. Whenever we, we can go to the room to kill lots, I mean, when, when we get um free time together and my phone is off and I'm just having a conversation with him. One of the first things we are so Teddy, what are the new guns that came out? Um you know he he, he started um uh Tim started him with a Walther P22 I think they used to have a, a range gun which was a Walther P22 and because his his hands were tiny and there was young black kid who took great interest and you know the guy is also like he's, he's one of those kids you, you see him you like him he's, he's a cool kid and now he shoots my 19x very well nice. and you know, good I'm, I'm actually looking at, at licensing him um getting him dss and licensing him um he's he, he's uh, 48 because he's still a bit slimish but I think I'm gonna get him his own firearm before he's 21. That's the way to go. That's the, That's way, to the go. way to go, Timber. Um, He'll never have money for drugs. He'll always be on the straight path. You know, that, 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 <laughs> that, that's, that's a fact. <laughs> like I still to this day, and it's a funny thing. Whenever I'm there's something, you know, because sometimes you get that consumerist coal in your ass that burns, and you're like, yeah, okay, there's a daily deal here. Like I could really. It's, it's either something stupid like a pair of sunglasses or an, a, a new keyboard for your desktop or something, okay. right? Yeah. And these days, even bottles of whiskey. And I take that and I quantify it as either a down payment on a new gun or how many boxes of ammo can I buy? And then 
I tend to usually go, okay, then I probably don't need this. I'd rather go buy the ammo. It's it's quite it's quite sad, but it's 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 a good way to prevent you from 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 spending cash, I suppose, because you are going to spend it later on ammo or on gas. Yeah. And it always <laughs> made, like, <laughs> that always makes me happier. Go for it. Go for it, Tim. So I I, I always have um, like these small side gigs that I do personally from 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 time to time. And I've been saying I'm gonna buy myself a Roni. And every time it gets to enough for a Roni, I'm like, but that's almost halfway for another guy. Uh, so I never get to it. I, I, I look, I don't blame you. I'm not gonna judge you. I would feel the same way. Exactly. You know what I mean? I would feel the same way, you know. <laughs> Especially yeah. if you see the prices that the deals on Type Fifty Sixes these days, man, like it's bonkers. I mean, these things are retailing for what just under ten, and you get four yeah. magazines with the bloody thing in most cases, and and it's a seven two, and some of them even now come with that proper AKM flash hider. Well, not the flash hider, you know, the the that flash hider slash recoil mitigation device. That thing that's, you know, that runs at a slight offset or angle to 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 the barrel's twist. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's not just flat in the front anymore. And I, I I had one of them the other day. We were transporting one from one dealership to the other for a client, and. I actually got back to CHS and I asked Disease, I was like, has the client paid for this thing yet? She's like, yes. I'm like, okay. Well, she probably just said that because she knew you were going to do something stupid. <laughs> yeah, look, if, listen, if, if, the, if the guy who bought the AKM from us is watching this, well, not the, not the AKM, the Type 56, it's beautiful. I touched it. I took it out of its plastic to just appreciate it a bit more. And then and then I wiped it down and I put it back and I never touched it again because I know I'll never have it. It's someone else's gun. It's sad. I hope no one really, I hope no one just joined us now because you you took it out and you touched it and you wiped it down. <laughs> and then you wiped it. Yep. Mm, mm, nasty. Mm. What were you wiping? Well, the, the Daily Daily Maverick is just going to take this section of the clip, cut it out of context, and says racist, misogynistic, <laughs> perverted sex based Gideon Hubert is online discussing his like most dirty, horrible inner fantasies. Uh, oh, apparently, by the way, all that cockroach says, apparently the consternation is that we were excluding the fat, middle-aged white hoax. <laughs> Uh, that's <laughs> the, the, hilarious. There's something that was on the screen now about black gun owners. What's that? Oh, yeah, I saw yeah, that. The, yeah, black gun owners yeah. and sports shooters. That's the one. Um, that's the one what from Cochrane. That that, so he says <laughs> the assumption, because I asked him what consternation were we causing, and it's like, no, apparently, we apparently, you and Hofu are now an organization, Timber, and you're called black gun owners and sports shooters. <laughs> Own it. Okay. I, I, I need to be clear about one thing on, on record. Um, I'm, I'm Gosa through and through. Um, we have a small WhatsApp and page, uh, Facebook page that is called African Gun um, Enthusiast, AGE. Hey, yeah. It is not an organization. It is not a repeat of, uh, of, of, of what... GOSA is uh, beautifully doing and everybody else. What it is, is just a platform for, um, you know, uh, you, uh, uh, black guys to get together. And we, we, we look at the challenges that as black people we face. I mean, there are some challenges. Um, no, there are some challenges. Yeah. The, 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 there's, when we go to DFOs, uh, our DFOs, I mean, I've, I've had, I don't know how many times I've went to apply, but I feel I have someone at the DFO's office asking me, what are you doing with so many? I don't yeah. think they ask, I don't think they would ask you that. If you go there and apply, yeah. they just ask you, do you have this and that? When I walk into certain gun shop and I feel like there's eyes piercing through me, when I talk yeah. to other guys and 
a couple of guys that have had a bad experience with a particular um, brand or shop where everyone is given the worst advice, like um, get a get a star, get a, you know, you get all the worst advice because everyone figures, oh, okay, stereotyping. Everyone figures, uh, well, a young black dude walking in is probably a taxi driver who's gonna want a, uh, a tour, you know, without bashing tourists, nothing to take away from tourists. A good brand sometimes. Um, I, I, we we only exist purely to do that. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, I've got, actually got a question that you might help me answer. So we've we've, we've got quite a lot of um, uh, black clientele coming into the store, uh, especially like quite an upsurge of new new ones, like first first time buyers. A lot of them independently like i i haven't spoken to these guys they come into the store and the first thing they ask me is do i have a star to sell them and when the first three guys ask it you kind of don't you know see much of a pattern You're just like oh okay like this guy really has his mind made up he really wants a star and then by the fifth guy you start going okay like what's the story then then you get a star you call them they come in and almost all of them pick it up and they go like, wow, this thing's really big and heavy. And I'm going, I'm going, yes, let me guess. You've never touched one of these before in your life, have you? And they're like, no. I'm like, okay, you're probably, unless you're convinced you're going to carry this thing every single day of your life, would you like to look at the other options we've got? <laughs> and depending on budget, the guys tend to go Glock, uh, I've had the odd person go for a CZ. Lots of guys like the Tauruses because they are good value for money. And especially if you're just starting out and it's a big investment for you. Well, we you want the answer for you, Red. We, 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 we know. Hoffi and I have had this conversation uh, longer than we've known each other. I think this conversation yep. where does it Where does the star come from? Tell me that. Okay. Tell me that story. The history. The price it's, of the I stuff. guess it's the same question as where you know with you know with 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 the Taurus thing. Um, I, I mean, if you were to look at it, the the now recent polymer G threes and G twos are value for money. But I mean, if you were to look at you know what is it the PT ninety two, those are really sort of sub twelve eleven grand. You know what I mean? So no, you, you can't really sort of, if you're in that price bracket, you should technically, you, you know, it's, you should be looking at a clock I mean, or a season. You, you, you know what I mean? You, you did a video, you did a video earlier today uh, um, we, we, with Paul and everyone at the, at, at the range. And you, you put a Beretta uh, and you, you used the term Z88. Now, in our history, as, as the black community, when we weren't allowed to own firearms legally, when it wasn't easy for us to do so, uh, the only mm -hmm. firearms we exposed to were the firearms on the hip or, or on the hips of uh, uh, policemen. Police, yeah, and it, was, yeah. it was either a vector or a Z88, and we it kind of became the the mythical norm that uh, that's why a lot of them will say. You, I'm sure you've heard this. They say, oh, this, this is the most powerful gun because th mm. that's that's the idea. So because Z88, obviously, uh, production-wise, and Torah was the next uh, uh, close, you know, the closest thing, that became that. The star was flooded into the market when um, gun shops realized, okay, we can now start selling to these guys. And they, uh, um, obviously, because of the LSM uh, bracketing, this is what they will afford. Yeah. So even when, I mean, I'll give you an example. When I started, I went into um, one of the dealerships, which I wasn't very uh, happy with. Funny enough, my relationship with them has, has become a whole lot better. Like, it's beautiful now. But when I went there to, to make my first purchase, I wanted a, a Gen 490, uh, which is my, my EDC. And I was told, no, we don't have stock. And I said, okay, it's fine. I'll pay and I'll come get it when you have it. I want two because I was getting for myself and my, my, my brother-in-law. They said, no, we don't have it. My brother-in-law, by the way, is, is, is an Indian guy. 
He calls, and he doesn't sound like me. He sounds white on the phone. And they say to him, yeah, we do him. And oh. then I call him, standing oh. right in front of them. Standing right in front of them. I call him, and I say, dude, I, what do you mean they have stock? He says, no, I just spoke to them now. I say, okay, hold yeah. on. Uh, the, the the lady behind the counter also says, I know we've got stock in the other branch. All right, but and, and, the and now you sound like you don't want to buy, buy your brother in law a gun, you know, he probably yeah. doesn't believe you. you know? I'm saying, <laughs> I'm sure your brother in law is thinking, No, this guy doesn't want to buy me that lock now. Are you making up stories yeah. about stock? You know what I'm saying? And yeah. luckily, I got it. I it, it's, it's, it's my daily carry. Um, I was told we don't have stock after I gave. Uh, the phone to the to the lady beyond the counter and he said listen I just got off the phone with so and so this person says they do have stock we called that person it was the same person who said to me they don't have stock yeah and yeah it, it so we, these are the dynamics this is why we, we we then we then exist on the site not to to do anything different from what Gosa is doing we 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 blue blood. We we goes all the way. Goes has got our six. We, it's gonna stay that way. Nothing's gonna change. The only thing is that we need to also be able to have a platform to assist. Like I said, I've helped yeah. these guys who would otherwise have not known exactly what to do. I've had to take them, hold them by hand, and say, "This is the first step. This is the next step. This is who you go yeah. to." I've brought a lot of people to various shops to. Um, Safari to, to Lynette who, who have done their proficiencies and assisted them from start to finish. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, and, just, just to sort of add to what Temba is saying, I mean, I'm, I'm also a, a GOSA. Um, and and what, what you tend to sort of find is, you know, a lot of guys tend to sort of start with people that they know. You know what I mean? Like, you've got a gun. How do I get one? You know? And I, I think after a while, you sort of, you got to sort of take them to a platform that can actually give them all that information and sort of assist, yeah. you know what I mean? Cool um, and, yeah. and, and, you know, that's what sort of African gun enthusiasts is for. And, and one of the other reasons why we, you know, the platform was also, I think, started was, you know, gun side is very brutal, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, and this is nothing against Frank and Co. Like you're good guys, but but there's a reason I'm not on there anymore because I was going to get an aneurysm. Um, yeah, and it, it, it's not a very friendly sort of platform where you can go in and say, "Guys, I saw a star. I want to buy a gun, and I've only got X amount, so I think I'm going to go with the star." You know what I mean? And then you the sort way. of get someone who comes in and shows you politely you know what you likely want to be looking at you know in the yeah. process you know yeah. i i got my baptism of fire on on, on the gun site page uh thanks to jason cool and <laughs> I, 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 lit, I came there as a novice and the guys would rip me apart but I, I'm, I'm more resilient than others i've got crocodile skin i, I i'll and I'm 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 happy to learn, even if it's tough love that I'm getting. But not not everyone gets it. And remember, we 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 20, 20 what twenty four years. It's not enough for people to have managed to 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 move fast enough to to be able to say, okay, he's not doing this to me because I look different or I sound different. And when I got onto uh, a lot of these um, uh, pages, there was, I mean, you, English is not, is not our, um, our mother tongue. So sometimes we can't express ourselves properly in it. And we want to ask questions. And then you get an yeah. idiot who, who, who makes, um, you know, it makes, makes you out to look like a, a fool, basically, because yeah. you couldn't, piece up the, the, the sentence proper. You know? Yeah, but yeah. meanwhile, he, his yeah. only language he can speak is English. Uh, and even then, he might, he's not speaking Shakespeare here either. You know? what's, what's, what, what's, what's that saying that never laugh at a guy who is fumbling to speak uh, your language? You know, because that means that he can speak more than one language. You know? Ex ex so, exactly. 
So, and so another I, thing I, that, I, sorry, Tim, but you can. I a lot of these things. I, I stood and I fought. If, if, I mean, there's a lot of people that will tell you on gun site um, and, and other pages. I stood and I said, listen, you're not going to talk to my people like this. If someone squeaks, if all they can, uh, if, all, if all they can express their, themselves through is Zulu, you don't have yeah. to say anything. <clears throat> Just scroll past, go find something that's of interest to you. We will come through and we will do, um, we, we will respond. The biggest Glock fanboy on TS. <laughs> but you are a Glock fanboy, Timba. <laughs> In actual fact, let me shut up, Slay Queen. Uh, but uh, before we get too far away from Wilson's comment, because I actually do want want us to answer this one because it's a it's a it's a reasonable question, and it's difficult to answer Wilson because you can spend if you if you spend a month that you can't get to the range, which lots of lots of people do. And you're just practicing dry firing, a good dry fire regime with your dummy cartridges or with a laser cartridge. Um, you're not spending any money that month to maintain your skill set. You're just practicing draw stroke. It comes down to your own level of personal discipline. Yeah. Um, and what are the different working codes? Yeah. But I do recommend if you can go to the range and do at least 50 rounds of meaningful practice, like one box of ammo per month. If you go yeah. with a plan, and you're like, I'm going to make these 50 rounds count because I've got a plan what I want to do with it. That is going to add hugely to your skill set. Um, yeah. You know, don't don't laugh that. So if you can afford that 300 rand a month um, you're and, and you do it with purpose, you're really going to get much farther than someone spending 3,000 rand a month on, yeah. on yeah. ammo and they're just wanking it down range with no plan. So you, you know what I also find really helps a great deal. Um you're right. I mean, dry firing is, is, you know, everyone should be dry firing. You know, it's, it's just one of those things. You know, we, we don't all have bucket loads of money where you can just hit the range and just, you know, you know, drop 500 rounds. You know what I mean? Like they do on YouTube. And, and dry firing is very important. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, I mean, you just need to sit in front of, you know, your mirror, unload that gun, make it safe, and minimum at least go 10 minutes, you know, dry firing. You know what I mean? Um, I, I really, really agree with you on that one, you know? Um, one of I mean, the people I mean, that gave me uh, 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 the baptism of fire, actually, the, it was Russell. I, yeah, I, I remember the names, um, and I've got big crud. It was Gideon, Jason, Russell. I can't remember that. There's one more guy. Those are the guys that actually made me want to stay. I was like, you know what? Screw these guys. I'm going to stay here, and I'm going to learn from <laughs> <laughs> but because I'm realistic and sarcastic, I guess um, it, for me it's like okay, this is home. I can take, I can take the punches as much as I can throw it. And you can give yeah. them, you can give them straight back. <laughs> um, the 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 cool the, the the cool thing is, um, and I just want to say sorry about Kermit. Yeah, you know, the cost is prohibitive. If you've got the capacity to save up for something, there are options. There are ways to make it work. My email I put on the screen. Let me do it again get in touch and one can always like we can have a conversation a discussion so i'll just leave it up a bit longer you can always rewind this will be up afterwards um something about you know having a space i'm not going to call it a safe space because i don't believe in safe spaces and i don't believe you guys have created the safe space you've just created a accessible welcoming platform for people mm -hmm. to go and mm -hmm. ask questions where they might feel embarrassed to put it out there on on a different type of forum and Many people forget, like three to four years ago, it's only been like less than half a decade where black gun owners have really started finding their voice on online forums and started really participating in discussions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it took time to 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 get that 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 connection and build it and and, and get it going. And what you guys are doing is is you're kind of creating a, a step before that where you get people who don't quite want to throw these questions out there but you've created a space where they can ask it without feeling like someone's going to ridicule them and then they can 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 really f spread their wings and fly after that so it's a massive service and i think mm -hmm. thank you for doing that work because yeah. that's why we're fighting mm -hmm. so efficiently right now against all this yeah. guy 
and and I mean, I, I think it's very important that you know we 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 sort of you know not forget that you know we we as gun owners also tend to be our own worst enemies. You know what I mean? Yeah. We, you, you, you know, we, we've got this potentially huge market, you know what I mean, of, I mean, every person who comes through any platform asking anything about guns, you know, wanting to hop on the bandwagon and own a firearm for whatever reason and for whatever brand, you know, that is potentially a, a, a body that we add to the bigger fight that we, you know, that, that we're currently sort of fighting, you know, and growing you know, the, you know, the, the, the gun owner sort of pool, you know, now, now we go in there and someone is like, look, I want, uh, <clears throat> I want a star, you know, I'm thinking of getting a gun. And then we just now climb on top of them and say, nah, Glock 19, Glock 19, that, you know, everything yeah. else is crap. You know what I mean? Type of thing. If you don't have, you know, 10 grand, save up and then get it when you have. But what we forget is, you know, we're now sort of ostracizing this person and making ourselves look like a bunch of morons in the process, you know, and then we sort of create this perception that, you know, we're arrogant, we're stupid, you know what I mean? And and we actually are the reason why some of these perceptions exist, you know, and that's one of the things we have to start facing and owning up to, the fact that we also contribute to the perceptions that are out there about gun owners, you know what I mean? Um, and that's got to change. And that's why you have some of these platforms like, you know, African gun enthusiasts to, to help guys that come in and say, look, I want this. And then you say, great, it's a start. You know what I mean? Start with something. We all have to start somewhere. You don't just walk into a dealership and buy a Ferrari when you're buying up your first gun, unless if you, I don't know, you got the bucks. You know what I mean? But even when you have the bucks, you know, you start with a car, you learn with that, you know, you practice, you drive it every day, and you sort of progress. You know what I'm saying? And and why should the standard be, you know, your first gun should be at Glock 19? I mean, what kind of crap is that? You know what I mean? That's that's the type of crap for people with 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 uh, more money than sense, as I used to be, and then the Rona hit, and then suddenly I developed more sense than money because all the money went by. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get smarter, I got poorer. Um, but uh, th that's the thing, is exactly that. Get, people also need to understand that they need to get what's ergonomic to their lifestyle. And a big part of that, yeah. it, budgets do exist. Um, Raymond says it, you got to start somewhere. It's not just the price mm -hmm. of the gun, as Russ points out. Um yeah, Graham's just on slam shot, slam shot. He's yeah, 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 Graham. We'll get you, yeah. we'll get you your gun soon, mate. Um, so and we need to get Floyd on. Floyd, mm -hmm. email me, and uh, you're more than we, we we love doing guests. But as we're running into into the end of our hour, um, I would like to do this next week as well because I'm sure we'll have something else to talk about within yeah. a week. Yeah. Um. And this is a re these are really cool conversations. And just by being here, um, we're already just pissing in the eye of those people that that uh, you know want to politicize something that that has no politics. Um, yeah. I mean, this is the this is the one cool thing. I don't I don't care what your politics are, Temba. I don't care what Hofu is. I'm pretty sure you don't care what mine is. I, I'm still figuring out what mine are. Um, because in the world of guns, that doesn't fucking matter. Um, I, I, I mean, guys, at the end of the day, you know, when someone comes to rob you or yeah. come, comes to, you know, kill you, whatever, you know, they're not going to come there and ask, so um, what, what party do you belong to? You know what I mean? And, and, and then after that, they're like, no, 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 we're not going to rob you. You know what I mean? Type of thing. Yeah. It should never be politicized because... Your life is, is, is much bigger than a political party or some political sort of rhetoric that, you know, people would be trying to push. I think we, it, it's, it's very important. And, and, and I, I still can't sort of understand how people can try and sort of justify certain things. We live in a very dangerous country. You know, the murder rate in this country is equivalent to that of a country at war. And we're not even in war. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean... Yeah. And, and, and somehow people still think it's normal for you not to actually have a firearm. You know what I mean? 
I, 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 I don't know about you guys and, and, and the rest of the listeners. I mean, have you ever tried to phone a police station, a local police station to try get help? You know what I mean? I went to You'll never get through. You know what I mean? So people just for some reason have this, you know, illusion that if something happens, I'm going to have time to grab my cell phone, find the police, the, the local police station number, phone, explain to them where I live, you know, tell them what's happening and then still have time to wait for them to arrive before I get shot or anything like that. You know what I mean? And, and it still baffles me that people actually genuinely still believe that we actually have a functioning police system in this country. You know, well, he, 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 said last week, um, if you remember the, 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 the freeway spikes thing, they yeah, said, yeah. sit in your car, lock the doors and wait for help. I was like, wow, we really did pick the best brain to lead us. Yeah. Well, by the sounds of it. Both sides want to make it a fair fight. Yeah. You know? And that's why you should lock your windows and wait for the police so that when the police arrive, it can be a fair fight. You know what I mean? That's it. That's exactly it. And I see that that this interference from our police minister's side within the day-to-day -day functioning of the SAPS is raising the ire of, of not just people outside of, it, of, the, of the police service, but of the police unions themselves. But that would be actually yeah. a very good topic for next week because then this issue would have probably developed a little bit more. But, um, yeah. you know, I think I, I think I speak for all three of us when I say, you know, that no one's coming to take my guns. I'm sorry, yeah. I, I refuse. That is, that is as, as someone who doesn't have a foreign passport, who has no plan on leaving this country, because I still, I might not believe in the South African dream, but I believe that there's enough space under the sun for all of us here. Um, and I believe in what this place can become when we find a way to, to state-proof our lives. From That means the government can exist and it can do whatever it wants, but we don't care <laughs> because we are busy living our best life um, as productive free citizens. And... You know what? I really don't want to be in the UK. Philippe, thank you for all your comments and you're an awesome guy, but I don't want to come to the UK. Um, I know there are people watching from the US and other people watching from Australia, uh, Germany, wherever. You've got beautiful countries. They're wonderful. I'm sure your food's amazing, but I'm quite happy where I am. Um, you know and what? we will let's stand and fight this bull and all the other cuck. Let's just be honest, guys, and I'm going to put it out there and people can roast me all they want. South Africa is an amazing country. The only thing that really sort of, you know, makes other people sort of go and live in another country predominantly is really the crime. But let's be honest, South Africa is a place where you want to be. You know what I mean? If you take away crime and, and some of the shenanigans that, that we have that are sort of too much, South Africa is an amazing country. You know what I mean? Uh, it's a yep. beautiful, we've, we've got the weather, you know, we've got the people, you know, we've got all these cultures, you know what I mean? It, it, it's just an amazing place, you know what I mean? And none of us are hashtag I'm staying idiots. We're saying this understanding fully, fully the risks and hazards attached to staying here. Um, the fact that we might end up with some sort of panicky authoritarian government trying to grab power. Um, I mean, we see it because of the likes of Becky Taylor that exist, but we're not afraid of this guy, um, and we're standing on principle, and that's just lack of being able to stand shoulder to shoulder with people who are who think the same way, and that is my main takeaway for this evening, and I'm looking forward to yeah. doing this next week. So, gentlemen, your your final thoughts as we're already over the hour. I'm going to start yeah. with Temba, and then Hofu can can send us home. Um, I don't want to leave it with thoughts. I think I've shared all my thoughts for the day, but I want mm. us to maybe next time talk about, I've sent you a couple of videos and I've sent you for a couple of years. Yeah. A lot of, there's this myth that is perpetuated by the same three people who've now dressed themselves out into three non-existent entities called uh, Gun Free AK and I think her garden and kitchen stuff. So what, 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 what what you see on those videos, what you see on those videos is firstly illegal immigrants, all right, from Lesotho and 
what have you, carrying illegal firearms that you do not find even with our military. Right? I sent yeah. you one where yeah, you, yeah. I sent you a, a group of Zamazamas, all armed with wire stock, automatic AK 47s, literally say, We, I hope they, they, I think in one of the videos they said, Yeah, they must send the small boys. boys. They yeah. should send the military now. Because that's how bad it is that a police officer was killed on duty, uh, you know, confronting illegal miners. So these are the people that they should be talking about. The handguns that I showed you that they, they displayed on the floor, those are all police issues. So how yeah, there, there was, wasn't a there single was a bunch of vets there. on the floor there. Yeah, I saw the Z eighty eight. Yeah. The vectors. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, we're definitely gonna unpack more of that next week. I'll actually need to make yeah. a note of this. Hofu, sorry, mate, you go. Look, I, I, I'm I'm just gonna say one thing. I mean, this is something that's sort of just been pressing. Um, you know, like I said earlier, you know, we as firearm owners tend to be our worst sort of enemies. And I mean, if you look at what's happening now with the fight with the proposed amendments, uh, I just want to go there quickly. You know, we're reacting. We're always reacting. You know, um, and 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 that's. That's very bad. That's actually pathetic. You know, um, we, we've got what an estimated total of three million licensed firearm owners. I mean, I don't know yep. what the figure would be in terms of individuals or, or entities that own those firearms. But we are unable to get together and actually make sure that the government can actually enact certain changes that we want. You know what I mean? The government exists to serve us at yeah. the end of the day, you know. Um, and for the fact that, I mean, if you were to look at the the, the, the response on, on platforms like DSA, AfriForum, and all of that, I think currently D DSA was sitting at about 100,000. 105,000, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's backed up by about... Um, by another five thousand over the last day and a half, so it's 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 suddenly gaining momentum again from somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, that, that that that's a good figure. You know, I'm not going to dispute that. But in the grand scheme of things, it's pathetic. Yeah. You know, and we need to do more as gun owners. We need to stop being reactionary. Uh, you know, always reacting. We need you know, to be we proactive. Need to take, you know what I mean? We need to be proactive. You know, we need to hit the streets. We need to hit the platforms. You know, we need to come together and make sure that, you know, we can get the government to listen. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, and the only way we're going to do that is when we come together and every day put in the work. We need to stop this whole thing that one day mana is going to fall from heaven and we're just going to be able to own, own all the guns in the world. You know what I mean? And remember, the government doesn't need to do anything. They've already got the FCA and a, and a yeah. dysfunctional CFR, you know, you know. Oh, and they've and we're got, just sitting they've holding this. all the cards. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we're just sitting here and hoping that somehow, you know, it's just going to miraculously solve itself, and we're going to be sitting with a Second Amendment type of situation where you can just buy a gun and walk out with it. You know what I mean? So, so, guys, let's just get off our backside. Let's stop being um, reactionary. Let's be proactive. Let's make shit happen. You know, support all these organizations that are out there. You know, join the fight, you know, and, and, and do every bit as much as you can to make sure that we ultimately get to where we want to be. And remember, at the end of the day, these are our lives we're trying to protect. You know what I'm saying? And if we're going to sit there... And, 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 and accept the fact that it's okay to wait two years for a firearm or 90 days in actual fact, you know, then that tells you a lot. I mean, we've got a problem and we need yep. to do something about it. We, that, we need know? to be stop being grateful for the breadcrumbs we're getting. We have a yeah. huge amount of momentum now with this thing. We have built relationships with civil society organizations far outside of ordinary gun owners. We've got ordinary people in the street who are seeing our side of the argument, maybe for the first time with any real clarity since 1994. It would be criminal. It would be a crime. And I personally think that I should be nailed to a piece of wood in the public square and crucified if we do not use this energy we have right now and push through this bill out the other side and say, okay, but we now have these relationships. We cannot, yeah. we dare not squander them. Let us build yeah. upon this foundation. 
Let us coordinate better. And let's work with those people who are willing to work with us. Even if traditionally yeah. we do not sit around the same campfires as they do, that does not matter. That is small fry bullshit. Okay, we yeah. can, we, 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 you know, this is the one thing that, that uh, I enjoy about seeing uh, from the Jewish community how they work. Because when there's peacetime, they tear each other to pieces with petty rivalries and infighting and bullshit. But you come from the outside and you present a threat. And all of a sudden, it's like siblings when mom and dad yeah. are being unfair to both of you at the same time. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to start punching your teeth out anymore. We're not going to unify and say, fuck you. You're mm. not, you know. And that's exactly what we need to do is we can f we can have our petty fights and disagreements later. Um, as long as we unify when it's important. Um, I mean, I made peace with PFTC today. Okay. <laughs> 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 we are now, we 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 are on the same page, uh, believe yeah. it or not. Um and we might still have civil differences about certain things, but it's more important now that we are all pushing in the same direction um, and keep your friends close and your enemies close and all that sort of stuff. But but yeah, that's that's yeah. my that's my. Fight. It's it's very important. I mean, I can't stress that enough. Um, the unity, you know, we we need that unity. We need you know that sort of single voice. You know, we need to constantly be sort of breathing down the government's neck. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we need to get to a point where Cyril himself says, just give them what they want. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and do stuff like that. You know, and and, and I, I'm actually surprised, to be honest with you, I'm going to put it out there. I'm surprised that we as gun owners have not hit the streets yet. Well, and uh, yeah. well, we are hitting the streets next week, but not not as big as I'd like to. But you know what? Let's eat this elephant one bite at a time. But at least we've started eating, guys, which is much better than yeah. where we used to be. <laughs> yeah, gentlemen, yeah. thank you for being here. We've we've well over time, but thank you for taking time of your schedules. Let's do this again next week. Is Thursday good for you guys? Um, yeah, that's just, good. Um, just to answer Grant, Whiskey Friday is just we're just taking a break for a while because we want to get back to a normal family life on Fridays. All of our, all of the participants, we will do Whiskey Friday again in the near future. But for now, I'm going to be hanging with these fine gents once a week if I can, or once every two weeks, and we'll be doing the security talks as well. So, um, yeah, there will be more content. But Timber, hopefully, you guys have been rock stars. Thank you so much. I will see you next week, but we'll be in the same WhatsApp group uh, mm -hmm. over the course of that time. Um, please stay on the chat. I'm just going to sign off and say cheers, shorts, and balalaika to everyone. Have a good evening and stay safe.